This city used to be called Banonia, which means a land rich and good. Now it's often teasingly referred to as the red, fat, and the learned. Why red is understandable. But my name is Diana, and I'm here to find out exactly why it's called fat and learned, and I only have one day to do it. Let's get started. As you may have caught on, my friends, I'm in Bologna. If I ask you where the world's tallest leaning tower is, you'd surely say it is in Pisa. But no, actually it's not. And it's here in Bologna. It's 318 feet tall and called the Asinoli Tower. Next to it stands the Tower Garisinda. These two giants are the landmarks of Bologna. After all, it's not called the City of Towers for nothing. And that's why I'm starting my journey of Bologna right here. According to a legend, these two towers were built by two powerful families of Bologna, the Garcindas and Isiniles. Of course, each family wanted their tower to be the highest and the most beautiful. The builders were in a hurry, and as one of the towers began to lean, the work had to be stopped. And that's how Bologna got its most well-known landmark. In the Middle Ages, there were many people in the city who wanted to compete with each other in unusual ways. Well, just imagine, this was a time long before television and the internet. In this light, constructing two towers seemed like reasonable entertainment. They built nearly 180 towers, but only 20 of them survive to this day. You can climb up the Garisinda Tower for $5.60. It's a 500-step climb. So, seeing as I only have one day and I care about my feet's survival, I'm going to have to skip out. Bologna is not only the city of towers, but a city of rich arcades, too. In the historic center, they stretch along virtually every building. You don't have to worry about the summer heat nor the autumn rain. You won't even need an umbrella. These arcades were a brilliant strategic idea for the city's infrastructure. After the establishment of the University of Bologna, there came a rush of students. They needed accommodation, but the land here was expensive. Ironically, the tax was only officially imposed upon the ground floor. So, they came up with a cunning way to save money. Taxes could be evaded under one condition, if a horseman could pass under the Ark. By the way, the architectural complex of the Bologna city center is UNESCO Heritage Site. We've arrived at the central square of the city, Piazza Maggiore. There are lots of things to see here, the formal police and justice office, as well as the Basilica of San Petronio. Oh, and there it is, the main fountain of Bologna. The statue is under reconstruction at the moment, but we can still admire the statue of Neptune. Once upon a time, the city residents gathered in the main square to discuss a sensitive issue, whether or not to add clothing to the statue of Neptune. The sculptor was accused for being indecent. But the people of Bologna voted against it unanimously, and Neptune remains naked. Neptune has been on the main square of Bologna since the middle of the 16th century. Immediately after the fountain's construction was finished, a law was issued that strictly prohibited washing one's hands in it. Offenders were to be punished with 50 whips. That's nearly a death penalty. The society was serious about maintaining its grace. Students believe that going around the statue clockwise brings them good luck before their exams. We should reform this whimsical rule. That's exclusive to students. Let anyone circling the fountain get granted this stroke of luck, whether a student or not. Bologna is known as one of the culinary capitals of Italy. It's also the main city of Emilia Roman region. The most famous Italian delicacies come from here. Parmesan Reggiano cheese, Parma ham, balsamic vinegar, and many other edible masterpieces. That's why the Italians nicknamed Bologna fat. Alma Mater Studiorium, Nourishing Mother of Studies. This is the University of Bologna's motto. By the way, it's the oldest university in Europe. We have to check it out. The University of Bologna was founded in the year 1088. At the time, it was known as the Stadium. And funny enough, in order to study here, students would hire the professors to teach them. Now it's one of the most prestigious universities in the world, but it's actually not too expensive to study here. It costs about $7,000 per year for the bachelor's degree. The atmosphere here is incredible, even mystical. It feels like any second now, Dumbledore will come out of nowhere and declare luminous and all the candles will ignite. The university's buildings look enchanting and enigmatic. Its long dark corridors, volumes of ancient books, emblems decorating the walls. It's like Hogwarts, is it not? The University of Bologna has one of the largest heraldic clans. 
In fact, there's a tradition that every year the most outstanding students can choose their coat of arms, but they can choose only for the entire student body. Later, it unites with other existing bodies of emblems. Just imagine the heated debates that these deliberations spark. Ironically, the university doesn't have a defining architectural symbol like that of many other universities. And even though Moscow State University isn't as old as the University of Bologna, it has its own character and beauty. Do you know why there aren't a lot of students at the university right now? They're all on Via Zamboni. It's the noisiest, most cheerful street of Bologna, the heart of student life. I'm heading there now. On the way to Via Zamboni, I'll show you a secret little spot. So, one lesser known gem of Bologna is right off Independent Street and before Piella Street 18. From here, you can find a window that opens onto Venice, and you can even spot one of its canals. They say that if you look through the window together with your significant other, your love will grow stronger by the day. I wish I wasn't here alone. As soon as I got to Via Zamboni, my feelings of loneliness vanished. It's so crowded. Overall, students are the same no matter what university they come from. When the air smells of spring, it's difficult to keep them locked up in the lecture halls. They are too eager to get out in the streets. Almost all students of the University of Bologna are leftists. So, anti-fascist meetings are a regular thing, as is standing up for student rights. You can feel the spirit of resistance. You won't find any hungry students in Bologna. There are so many cafes and restaurants fit to any taste and budget. No one is left hungry. I choose Osteria for a good reason. It's a traditional bohemian place. Singers, writers, poets, and actresses are its regulars. Even Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt have tried the specialty pasta here. Well, now we can too, right? Why should you try in Bologna? Oh, the spaghetti bolognis. Why, of course. Well, if you think so too, I'm going to have to disappoint you. There's no dish like that on the menu. In Bologna, meat sauce is always served with tagliatelle, the classic egg pasta. Delicious. The egg noodles, the egg pasta, so soft and complemented nicely by the meat sauce. I think it's an amazing combination. It's clear why the locals are fond of this dish. I think it would be awesome to treat your friends to a dish like this, and I know how to make it happen. Bologna is famous for its pasta, so be sure to bring some back home with you. Try to find a place like this where you can buy it handmade. Hello? Hello? Could you please tell me what's the most traditional pasta in Bologna? Tortellini, of course. It's the staple Italian pasta. I can teach you how to make it. I've been invited to try and make tortellini pasta with my own hands. Well, I can't miss out on this after all. This is the authentic tortellini made using true Italian recipes. Tortellini reminds me of dumplings, but instead of mincemeat, they use cheese. Take a little piece like this, place it in the middle. Wow, look at me, just like an Italian mama. I feel like the matriarch of an Italian family. Come back this summer, we'll teach you. Would you look at that? I've even been invited to a summer apprenticeship. We have this steaming room. Okay. And it's very hot. She's saying it'll be warm here during the summer, nice. They'll train me how to properly make tortellini. Well, for our little Giuseppes. Who is Giuseppe? I don't know, my future son perhaps. <laughs> Tortellini has to be cooked for no longer than a minute so that the dough remains tender and the filling doesn't lose its taste. So fast? Now I understand why everyone here buys tortellini. You can get them pre-made, all ready and tasty. So all you have to do is throw them in some water for 30 seconds and that's it. You're a head chef. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So delicate, so delicious. Mmm. Makes me want to stay in Italy forever for this. 
Delicious. Just try it. My advice to you is to buy groceries instead of souvenirs in Bologna. Everyone will appreciate the edible gifts even more. Well, you see, the verdict is clear. It's so good that I'm happily putting on an extra pound for this. You've probably noticed that I'm constantly eating something in Bologna. Well, what can I do? Everything's so good. It's impossible to resist. It's like some endless feast. I'm definitely going to gain some weight. Okay, I should probably walk to the next stop on my itinerary. All the most important things in the city are very close to each other, so you can cover the entire city of Bologna by foot. Look who I've bumped into on the way. The Bolognese breed, another token of Bologna. Not to be confused with the Maltese. Look what I found here, hello. Is this a Bolognese? Oh yes. Wow, look guys, this is a true Bolognese, yes. They don't have Balinese pasta, but Balinese dogs are bred here. That's so cute. Can I pet her? Aww. What's her name? Appy. Appy! You're such a good girl. She's so cute. They're known for their sweet temperament and friendly nature. Just look, what a good girl. You're such a baby. Oh, so sweet, baby Balinese. You're so sweet. Oh. A charming little creature. Oops, I think I'm lost. Got a little carried away. It's okay. I know who I should turn to for help. My next stop is the Museum of Music, but I don't know the exact address. There should be a tourist center around here. Surely they can direct me. I got off to admit, maps aren't my cup of tea, but charm can get you places. Hello, excuse me, could you help me find the Museum of Music? Of course, you're right here in Piazza Maggiore. Go towards the towers, and when you pass them, turn left, and you'll see the museum. Oh, great. That's easy. Thank you very much. Can I take this map with me? I'm here, this beautiful place from the 16th century. It's home to numerous instruments from famous European composers and hundreds of priceless musical score sheets. This museum was on my to-do list. I should probably ask one of the employees why I cannot miss. Could you possibly direct me towards the must of the exhibition? I'm short on time. Do you have 10 minutes? Yes. Yes, of course. Great. I'll show you the most interesting parts. Here's the man who collected this incredible collection. Padre Giambattista Martini was the best music teacher of his time. He was born in the 18th century. Young musicians from all over Europe came here to learn from him. Giovanni Battista Martini was hugely influential among musicians of his time. Christopher Gluck, John Bach, in Giuseppe Tartini and many others considered it a great honor to be presented in his gallery of great musicians and sent their portraits to Martini themselves. This is an entirely keyboard-made instrument with two rows of keys. That's what distinguishes it from the usual piano or harpsichord, the full keyboard. However, in order to play it, you need seven fingers on one hand. Then why did they make it? In the 16th century, theory was more important than practice. This is a musical instrument that can't be played. It was created by the composer and designer Nicola Vincentino in a unique copy. By the way, the keyboard of the harpsichord consists of 125 keys, each of them responsible for a single note. Fascinating. That's the original manuscript of the Barber of Seville, the most important and influential opera of Rossini. Do you know it? Ah, che bel vivere, che bel piacere, che bel piacere per un marmiere di qualità. It is written by hand, not print, right? And this is the first printed score sheet, which was made in Venice, 1501. It's not very surprising that Bologna was awarded the honorary title, the City of Music, by UNESCO for storing such great treasures. Gutenberg invented the printing press to print texts. Yes? Printing scores was initiated by the Italian Ottaviano Petrucci. 
This is the end of my tour, but my friends, if you are in Bologna, I recommend you spend more time in this museum if you can. Besides, there's a charming administrator working here who is a true music lover. Ciao. Ciao. I think I've covered everything that I had on my agenda for today. Now it's time to blow off some steam. I'm going to drop by the hotel to change. It's right in the center. All Italians love music, and Bologna is no exception. I arranged a little something special for tonight, but we have to hurry. Bologna, everyone loves jazz. They even host an annual jazz festival here. Although I can't make it to the festival, I'm still going to enjoy some jazz, and apparently there's a spot known for the best jazz in the city. And look, it seems to be true. The place is packed. Speaking of Italian music, the first thing that comes to mind is probably arias from La Traviata by Verdi, or the famous tunes of Ennio Morricone. But jazz music has its own scene here too. You have to visit it just to appreciate it for yourself. It's the last call. My evening is coming to an end, but it was truly beautiful. I really recommend listening to jazz in Bologna. <laughs> wow. Although I've enjoyed everything so much, my evening, like my trip, is winding down. But undeniably, Bologna will stay with me forever. And I can now confidently say one day is enough to fall head over heels for this amazing city. Bologna is bidding me farewell with its rain. And frankly, it's quite fitting because leaving is bringing me to tears. I think Bologna is truly one of the most underrated cities in Europe. At first, it's peaceful, mature, scholarly, and abundant with a culture that encourages creativity in its arts and music. And then you discover another Bologna. You feel its rebellious spirit, its passionate heart. I want to come back here as soon as possible. But now I have to hurry off to the next city. My name is Diana. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>